have no idea. It's like it's but God's will. You know, I don't know how much you see this principle. I've been so blessed to see this principle, but, that, but in your life, but as, as you walk in his will, it's like, wow, God, you knew it. You planned it. I had no idea. It's such a totally different way of living. It's that there's a purpose in everything. There's already a destiny there from God. It says in Psalm 90, teach us to number our days. And that means a lot of, in, 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 in itself. But for those who know, the Hebrew doesn't quite say that. It says in Hebrew, to, well, it can say that, but it can mean more than that. It says, teach us to mona our days, or which not only means number our days, like, okay, to, to cherish them and, and value them, but also it means teach us to ordain our days. Ordain our days. Our days are to be ordained for the purpose of God. Just like a minister is ordained, goes out and ministers, our days are to be ordained for God. Ordain. The story of Josiah, Yoshiahu, a king who was born of evil kings in a time of Israel's apostasy, kind of very much like America. And judgment is looming over the land, and they're worshiping Baal and Moloch and offering up their children in sacrifice. And one of the evil kings has a son, Yoshiahu, called Josiah in English. He grows up and he chooses, I'm not going to walk in the ways of my fathers. I'm going to walk in the ways of the Lord. And he becomes a godly man. His father dies, Josiah becomes king. And he sets out to bring the nation to repentance. And he ends up there, he goes up to the high places and smashes the idols of the nations that were on those high places and where they, and the, play, the altars where they lifted up their children and sacrifice. And one day he's up in the high places clearing them and he sees an object and he says, what's that? And they say, you know what that is? That's, that's the, that's the, that's was done marking the prophet who was here centuries ago who prophesied that you would come here, who prophesied you'd come. Imagine, this is like centuries ago. It'd be like someone in the 17 or 1600s prophesying that you would come to a certain place. You come to a certain place and that, whoa. Josiah had no idea. Imagine Josiah's reaction to know that his entire life was prophesied, that everything in his life led up to his growing up, his choosing God, his moving in revival, and going on that mountain that day was prophesied, foretold was his destiny. There was a destiny to his life, a life of destiny, a plan. He, had, he didn't have to know what it was. He just had to follow the will of God. As he followed the will of God, he walked into his appointed prophesied destiny. And that's the key. The more you follow and surrender, Lord, I want to do with all my heart, the more you'll get to that mountaintop. And that's not just, it's not just a story. This is real. This is reality. When we were in Cuba, we were, I was led to give a message of the Jubilee. And, you know, it's freedom and, and restoration and reconciliation and all that the Jubilee is, which was actually a dangerous message at the time. Because I'm preaching and my, and my translator, I'm saying, and, and God says, freedom. And my, my translator's saying, I've got to come up with a word that's not going to get me arrested. <laughs> and I said, you know, it's like a revolution from God. He's like, and there are people like at every service who are secret police. And the man who was, who was translating for me was a man whose name was Felix. And he was Spanish. And he was in the congregation. And he wanted to come. He was led to come. And he came with me and he was my translator. So I'm talking about it's Jubilee. And I said, and, I, and as a Jewish person, I'm assigned to you of Jubilee. And, and he's saying, I'm assigned of Jubilee and this whole thing. And we're, we're going across. And it turned out that Felix had come from Cuba. I didn't know it originally. He came from Cuba as a child with a revolution. That his family lost everything. And his grandfather owned and buried a deed of land in the soil. And it turned out on our last day for Felix, he had extended, he was going to go for one week. He ended up going for two. He couldn't do it more than that. We ended up on the last day going to a, re a region called Kamaway. And Felix knows that there's a church in the area that's kind of near where his homeland was. So he, he calls, he says, oh, you know, he tries to see if we can minister there. And he gets all dressed up, I remember it. And, and then the, our 
the, the guy who was leading us said, sorry, we can't go there. We already have something planned. Sorry. We have to go to somewhere else. So they take us somewhere else in the middle of nowhere. Dirt roads. Literally, there were vultures circling the bus, I remember. And we go to this place, and it's a farm, and, we, and there's a kind of church, empty church, and, and we say, okay, where's the people? You can't, we, you know, we came in the middle, it's coming of nowhere. How are they going to get, get here? Most people there didn't have cars. And they said, don't worry. And all of a sudden, we see this grain truck pull up with like 50 people on the back of the truck. And then we see another one with another 50 people. And another, these trucks come in with people. But before we're about to minister, Felix is come, he's walking around, they're showing him some things, and he comes back and he look, he's in a daze. I said, what, what happened? I said, what, you, you, you got to be ready to translate today. What, what, you look totally dazed. He said, he said, I can't believe, I said, what? He said, this farm is the land of my grandfather. This is my family's land. The, the Lord brought me back to the land we lost on my last day. This farm is part of my inheritance. And here we are preaching Jubilee, and in Jubilee the command says that each man shall return to his family's land. And here we're doing it every day, and every day we're walking one step closer to that moment. Every day we had no idea. And it turned out that Felix had always dreamed of coming back to his land and building a church and preaching there. And here the church is already built, and that night he preached. And the pastor didn't even know any of this. And the pastor there opens up to Leviticus 25 and reads, every man shall return to his, to his land without knowing it. Every footstep, the footsteps of the righteous man are ordered by the Lord. The heavenly pattern of our lives. Felix had no idea what we were doing and it looked like the plan of God. Well, his plans were being cut off and broken what he wanted and God had it better. Like Josiah had no idea. All he was doing was simply following the Lord, the Great Commission. And in the end, he'd look back and see that every delay, every problem, everything would all lead up to that moment. Just like us here.